I don't know. I, I feel it's it, this is more like a, I don't know. It's like more, more like a spiritual meeting than an interview. So Dan, thank you so much for your time. I'm so honored to be speaking to you. Um, yeah, uh, seriously, it does feel like a spiritual meeting more than uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's just beautiful. Starting with the Ophanic idea, mm -hmm. um, we see that the, the plasma clouds, which are interstellar, uh, really are self-aware, potentially. Okay. And many of the plasma universe scientists agree and believe in angels, actually. Physicists who are studying plasma, many of them believe in angels. Beautiful. And that, that leads us to what makes plasma intelligent or self-aware. Okay. And uh, yeah, obviously the Ophane and Minokian story with John D was in part about their alphabet, uh, Ophane and Minokian, which we now know is a, a shadow of symmetry donut domains which uh, enable them to implode. It was called hypercube symmetry. It just means to tilt those charged donut toroid domains in such a way as to cause implosion, which is called phase conjugation or visualizing how pine cones kiss noses, as we often use that metaphor. Okay. And and that then leads to your main question, which is about uh, you know healing fields. Yes. That um, once we understand kind of the universe is a cloud of charge, 99.99% uh, of the universe is plasma according to conventional physics. Mm -hmm. Then the simple question is, well, how does a cloud of charge become you know able to talk to you, self-aware? Okay. And actually, many people who have had telepathy experiences with ball lightning would agree <laughs> you know okay. when these the donut vortex ball lightnings you can talk to them yeah. uh, and they respond and we realize that in, in lightning is much like that as well and there's a lot of mythology around that so we're beginning to understand how to make a cloud of charge uh, self-aware negentropic uh, able to organize itself and therefore heal actually and so we have I have some visuals about that but we okay. can talk about that Yes. Um, well, uh, the concept of longevity is, um, for an electrical engineer in physics, quite simple. Yeah. Uh, remember that famous uh, Sufi movie, Gurdjieff movie, of Meetings course, with yeah. Remarkable Men? Of course, yeah. The, the, the Sufi who could make the best echo was obviously the best saint. <laughs> okay. And, and uh, actually, that's a good metaphor for the physics, which is simply that uh, you know, electric charge domains like your aura, for example, mm -hmm. become sustainable like a perfect echo mm -hmm. under certain circumstances in correct geometry. And that geometry is um, illustrated by how indigenous people design burial grounds. Uh, the Hopi, for example. Okay. Uh, Karatkov went with uh, the Hopi yeah. uh, to yeah, yeah. you know the famous life story. Life, the book, uh, yeah. To, to measure the, fra the fractality of the air where they could make phone calls to ancestors. Yeah. And we learned that charge implosive or harmonic inclusive, it was measured with capacitive coupling and power spectrum. The air that's imploding electrically, which is to say distributing charge perfectly, mm -hmm. is perfect for burial grounds and phone calls to ancestors. And therefore, a good place for birth or death, like Stonehenge or Machu Picchu, where magnetic lines converge and implode. They they embed in what's called longitudinal electromagnetics, which is kind of DNA radio compressional wave. So, um, rejuvenation or sustainability or immortality, however you want to put it, is basically an electric field that is a perfect echo. <laughs> and to make to make that field sustainable, and we think we have defined sustainability in general as the negentropy that results from charge impro implosion, which is basically a fractal field. So if you visualize a rose or a pine cone, you see the geometry of an imploding electric field. And by designing that electrically, uh, we think we've, we've been able to help people. Now, you know, there's a lot of natural sacred spaces and they do help create electrical sustainability for your aura. Um, and we have a, a technology, therify.net, which makes plasma, which we're achieving rejuvenation and helping people in 20 countries pain among other things. 
the pr the pure physics behind your question is uh, perhaps the most important thing and in physics uh time reversal was measured in one case only and that was in the case of what's called phase conjugate optics so if you take lasers and cause them to uh, oppose each other and kiss noses like pine cones very mm -hmm. accurately and angstrom level accuracy mm -hmm. within a media called a phase conjugate mirror which we now know is a super high high dielectric like barium strontium titanate or potentially the Kaaba stone of the muslims okay uh which was the ark of the Kaaba, which was rather the the um, the philosopher's stone or the projective powder um, that that super high dielectric implosive capacitance steers the converging flux lines of those lasers kissing noses accurately to precise uh, Planck level implosion, which brings up my equation, golden ratio multiples times Planck produced this equation called origin of biologic negentropy, mm -hmm. the frequency signature of every living thing that's emerging from chaos. Uh, photosynthesis, Earth year, Venus year, galactic year, etc. Mm -hmm. It's on the cover of my book at fractalfield.com. So, when physics measured uh, time reversal uh, in phase conjugate optics, they were very clear later, actually, that time reversal had a pretty limited meaning. <laughs> okay. They saw a wave system go back into the past only if it was moving toward increased order. Okay. So, for example, in physics, you can time reverse rusted steel back to unrusted steel, but you cannot do the reverse in physics, which means you cannot time reverse toward disorder. You can only time reverse toward increased order. Okay. Now, that becomes very profound when we study time reversal and making stem cells with phase conjugate plasma, for example. So this is a field that we're studying deeply we have partners in stem cell research and and phase conjugate uh, optics and uh, our plasma system therify.net is being used in very advanced experiments mm -hmm. because we think we have a beginning of the knowledge of what is time reversal and and finally uh, just uh, to comment in a traditional way you know in the bible when they said they would raise a shem unto the lord mm -hmm. and that was mistranslated the word shem became the word shaman and alchemy chemistry access to a black hole shem mm -hmm. uh, what they meant was they were going to make an electric field that reversed aging okay which um uh zachariah sitchin translated shem to mean highward firestone implosive capacitance it would also reduce radioactivity mm -hmm. as did the ark of the covenant so uh the ancient Sumerian is full of conversations about uh, the desperate need to produce a time reversal field, which we think those famous Egyptian light bulbs in the cartouche were, which are a shadow of what Therify.net is now, uh -huh. a time reverse rejuvenation field. So there you go. Well, there's so much research, unbelievable. <laughs> Uh, there's an exercise in the Emerald Tablets uh, that, speaks of, uh, that speaks of immortality. Uh, it talks about like aligning yourself to the north and south, like putting your head to the north and your legs to the south, and then reversing it for an hour each. And that's supposed to like uh, balance the electrical fields of the body. And Thoth, in the Emerald Tablets, uh, he speaks of immortality this way. So what's your take on that, Dan? Um, the ancient native traditions about the sacred four directions Mm -hmm. is very useful physics, actually. Okay. Uh, example being um, the physics of why the Agni Hotra, uh, burning of the living plasma of uh, the butter, the ghee, uh, in a capacitor that's uh, uh, imploding capacity. It was a pyramid-shaped copper or gold mm -hmm. cup. And uh, that was done uh, precisely and very precisely at sunrise, sunset. Okay. and ideally also oriented in four directions. And we saw, you know, consistent practice of Agni Hotra turn what was a wasteland in Poland into the Garden of Eden, quite literally. The whole area became fertile. And we believe at Bhopal and at Nagasaki, those who did Agni Hotra are the ones who survived. Yeah. So we think they were imploding plasma by using phase conjugation, by making... The four pine cones kiss noses accurately with respect to the four directions, which in physics would be called using a conjugate field to embed longitudinal waves, which are the compressional waves, which implode and make self-organization and negentropy. Mm -hmm. So your question, yes. 
your your field is nominally oriented north south which uh, creates a relationship to the plasma center of the Earth and plasma center of the Sun. Yes. And when they all align very accurately in those four directions, for example, sunrise and sunset, the neg entropy of that field is increased. Okay. And also at various astrological alignments. So that to use the centripetal centrifugal alignments of your body's north-south and then breathe in phase with that and focus mm -hmm. would increase the implosion and neg entropy of that plasma, the living, in religious terms, Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. Yeah, because thought in the Emerald Tablets literally says that this exercise would allow the person who masters it to achieve immortality. And that's how he did it, essentially, that's how he says it. I've actually seen then some devices that c uh, claim healing people from diseases by putting like two metal plates, uh, one uh, like over the head and one over the feet while you're sleeping, of course, like next uh, after the feet and uh, before the head. And then uh, they would put an electrical charge um, to like a positive to the head and negative to the feet. And then they would reverse it like 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Keep they, keep they would keep reversing the electrical charges this way by using the plates to the head and to the feet. And they claim that they can heal diseases this way. So what do you think about that? Is it worthy of... It's true that if a pulse geometry is done accurately, PEMF, for example, pulse electromagnetic field therapies, mm -hmm. that that pulse rate of reversal could eventually create a harmonic cascade pattern which could become implosive, okay. conjugate and negentropic. Okay. Uh, we believe that the accurate pulse geometry required is only possible actually using the precise equation which is the cover of my book a golden ratio exponents of Planck because charge collapse imploding to the Planck threshold okay. is how gravity is made it's the cause of gravity and consciousness so that yes reversing those pulses could be quite useful but doing it intelligently would require understanding how to use golden ratio phase conjugation to Planck but that being said uh, pulse geometries can create awareness and healing. Uh, on the other hand, pulse geometries that are incorrect uh, prevent healing. A very practical example okay. would be, uh, we've talked many times, if you take the poisonous pulse geometry of fluorescent light mm -hmm. out of your child's classroom yeah. and instead install sunlight, there is a dramatic measured increase in attention span. Yeah. What the physics of what created that attention is the pulse geometry of hydrogen itself, the fusion at the core of the sun, and the power spectra, which becomes photosynthesis, which we now know as phase conjugate. So not only can pulse geometries heal, but pulse geometries can also destroy. Yeah. And understanding precisely what phase conjugation is is the only way to know the difference, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Even Wilhelm Reich talked about this, like the fluorescent light and its uh, effect on uh, what he called organ and dead organ. Yes, uh, yeah. uh, Wilhelm Reich um, was using implosive capacitance, which is the more accurate term for organ energy accurately. Um, and unfortunately, uh, I mean, Wilhelm Reich had many correct intuitions that if you layer the conductive and non-conductive material, mm -hmm. and then in a uh, concave or convex, particularly concave geometric, that you create a capacitive field which becomes centripetal and therefore creates life, will mm -hmm. cause a seed to grow, for example. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, uh, Wilhelm Reich um, failed to understand the need for a precise language, and the precise language obviously is electrical engineering, it's the only the physics it's the only really precise language on the planet right so a lot of the wilhelm wright people cling to the idea that the concept orgone should not be described electrically when in fact you cannot know what it is without electrical engineering Correct. Uh, the electrical engineering is that the um organic material insulator between the plates of the metal capacitor he called orgone accumulator right the organic material was a specific kind of insulator, which is called a high dielectric, meaning efficient capacitance, meaning okay. that capacitor could ring like a bell. The physics is that the mo molecular geometry of material that's been involved with life uh, rearranges its molecules to be more fractal because they saw my bumper sticker, get fractal or get dead. <laughs> okay. and, and so 
uh, the molecules in living material got more fractal, increasing the dielectric constant, meaning the efficiency of resonance of their capacitance, meaning your aura can breathe in a high dielectric material, which is the physics of why it's critical that your house be made of organic material, mm -hmm. and it will kill you if your house is made of only steel and aluminum. It'll literally kill you. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's the necess necessity of the aura to breathe efficiency, which in physics is called high dielectric constant. So if you put these high dielectric materials between the layers of conductive material, like gold would be ideal, mm -hmm. then you implode the capacitance and that becomes centripetal. And the correct term is implosive capacitance, not orgone. And to reveal and prove the principle, you simply take the power spectra of the weak capacitive field. Anyway, the opposite of that, which is, you know, a capacitance, which is precisely fractionating, yeah. Uh, which would be cubic and create maximum destructive interference, what he called door or dead orgo. Yeah. Yes. It would be, might be appropriate to note that, uh, you know, when I was young, I studied Reich's other book, The Function of the Orgasm. And sadly, I think he really did not know uh, because he assumed the, the cell's ability to release its charge orgasm mm -hmm. was simply a way to avoid disease and was like flushing something down a toilet, actually. Mm -hmm. Whereas, in fact, he didn't know how the ultraviolet capacitive content of the cellular orgasm, basically, mm -hmm. uh, could feed bliss, as in Kundalini and Tantra and bliss. Yeah. And there's a whole level of the function of the cellular emissions related to orgasm and other things that Reich really did not know about, and it's sad. In the second part, uh, cancer myopathy, he speaks a lot about like the overcharge creating cancer in the system. So he talks about this. Yeah. Ah, yes. Well, that's good. Um, we now know so much more. We've measured the microwave content of the spine in Kundalini, yeah. and we know it's ADP uh, emanation, which is a 1.91 angstrom conjugate dimension, which is how the cell emits its uh, microwave radiance to conjugate broad spectrally to create that pump up the spine liquid, which is the physics of Tantra Kundalini and Bliss. Oh, amazing. So what would be an advice that you would give people who suffer? Uh, because we speak, we have a lot of people who uh, uh, come to us in search of like curing diseases, in, in, especially cancer in its advanced stages. So what would be your, fair, your best advice for those people? Well, there's two very appropriate parts to your question. One yeah. would be, of course, um, you know, the energy solutions to cancer, and the other would be energy solutions to bliss, and they're, they're related. Okay. <laughs> and first of all, functionally, all behaviors which increase the, sharp, the size of your aura okay. are actually creating what was called your spiritual body, your ka, your boat into the underworld, which is quite literally to follow your bliss. Yeah. So once you understand what behaviors cause your aura to grow, you can begin to make decisions, all decisions in life, exactly. For example, don't surround yourself with electrosmog and dead air or your aura is going to collapse. Okay. Uh, and surround yourself with biologic material and learn how to deep breathe. So the, the physics of creating bliss is identical with the physics of reducing cancer in that sense. Okay. Uh, but... More particularly, most particularly, the electrical understanding we now have, uh, and you can read about this at therify.net uh, uh, and also goldenmean.info slash cancer, mm -hmm. uh, of what cancer is. Uh, cancer is a failure to distribute charge, quite literally, would be, would be accurate uh, but general description of a cell with cancer. Okay. Uh, and the way we understand that now is, um, and charge distribution, as you know, is literally fractality, the pine cone shape. Make your, you know, your bed and your house and your village look like a rose magnetically, and you got it. Okay. <laughs> uh, but charge distribution efficiency, as applied to the biophysics of cancer, um, remember that cancer is defined by a cell that does not respond to touch. It's called contact inhibition, and functionally, it is the definition of cancer. Okay. And now we know that you can measure that onset by simply measuring if the cell got too spherical. If the cell is a sphere, uh, the harmonic content is cubic and therefore not charge distribution, where the, the egg shape or the, the complex shell shape is able to project plasma or charge through its membrane. It literally gets softer <laughs> yeah. and cancer is people whose aura is armored which is too hard or spherical and therefore fail to respond to touch 
it's more than metaphor it's physics so we believe on a physical level uh, you could describe cell metabolism as an energy cascade from long wave think of food incoming down to shorter wave visualize a caduceus coming to a point on a pine cone mm -hmm. so the long wave comes in and uh, and then there's a bunch of stages and metabolism is massaging the wavelength to shorter and shorter wavelengths until the cell metabolism goes through what's called DNA precursors and finally unto high quality coherent ultraviolet light which is the motor of cell metabolism in general mm -hmm. UV blue fire yeah. and the ability to distribute that blue fire is quite literally the sex juice of the cell. Now, if the sex juice of the cell, the UV, the blue fire, come on, baby, light my fire. <laughs> if, if, that, if that ultraviolet coherence has a way out, which is through a soft membrane, for example, surfactants like lecithin, soften membranes and reduce cancer because they allow the ultraviolet to go out through the membrane through the mechanism of touch. Mm -hmm. However, if the membrane is hard and spherical, then that coherent ultraviolet is going to bounce back towards cellular center. Mm -hmm. And that is the trigger for meiosis and mitosis. So if, everyone def if ever anyone defined the cause of cancer electrically, I think it is my biophysics professor, Earl Etienne, University of Massachusetts at Worcester, who taught me how that energy cascade of the cell moves down a caduceus toward UV coherent light. So the UV coherent light, if it has no place to go, has to trigger meiosis and mitosis, cell, premature cell division, literally cancer. Now, you can understand that by thinking about a child in school. One child is given dance and music and, and plays and all kinds of outlets for creative you know, juices, sex juice. Mm -hmm. The other child has no creative outlets and then wants to have a child prematurely, promiscuity, literally, because mm -hmm. there's no way out for the sex juice, the creative juices. Mm -hmm. So that if a child has learned touch permissive behavior, mm -hmm. there will not be cancer. If a cell is taught touch permissive behavior, there will not be cancer. So this is the beginning of understanding how you create an environment electrically where charge distribution is efficient. Remember when Antoine Priori mm -hmm. famously healed thousands, if not tens of thousands of people of cancer in France, documented by the French government, mm -hmm. the Priori device was the precedent for Therify.net, our plasma, which we're able to help many people, although we have only, only anecdotal reports now, but there are many, we are in 20 countries. The principle is the same, mm -hmm. that is, we create a plasma field that implodes, creates charge distribution efficiency, literally pumps your aura, and that is the electrical opposite of cancer. So that's, yeah. that's a beginning. Now, th that translates into a hygiene, and that hygiene is, you know, diet and dance and movement and food and water that all invites charge distribution. So let's give a practical example. If you eat a lot of wheat and dairy whose DNA has been, um, shall we say, put in prison by monoculture, then it creates lots of mucus okay. uh, and it, because the body s feels that as a poison. Because monocultured wheat, for example, actually literally is a poison mm -hmm. because monoculture makes the DNA angry and your immune system appropriately says not self, which is called mucus. Okay. So avoiding things like wheat and dairy, which are not part of genetic diversity, is very helpful for cancer. These are basics. So you're beginning to understand what invites charge distribution and therefore what is the opposite of cancer, which is a hygiene for bliss. And we have lots of suggestions there in the um, Implosion, Secret Science of Ecstasy and Immortality, my second book, which is a book about hygiene for bliss for kids. The link is goldenmean.info slash conscious kids. Yeah, amazing. I have to ask this then. Uh, what do you think about the parasitic theory uh, of cancer? Uh, a, a lot of theories tie, uh, tie cancer with fungus, for example. And I've spoken with <laughs> the Italian doctor, uh, Simoncini, who, who actually theorizes and uh, treats cancer by treating the fungus. What do you think about the parasitic theory? Um, my partner is deep into Simoncini and the study of alkalinity versus cancer yeah. and treating it as a fungus. Great. Um, I think there are many uh, appropriate and complex correlates to cancer. Mm -hmm. Remember we defined a cancer as a cell that divides prematurely, which is a reasonable definition. Right. However, it's true that in the presence of fungus, 
which is, are basically eating the charge that could not distribute, okay. uh, you, you will have premature cell division. So uh, the fungal correlate could well be the most, one of the most important correlates of cancer, and I tend to agree with them. And I've okay. seen those useful videos where you see a strong alkaline liquid, for example, a bunch of good baking soda dissolves, you pour it on the cancer and it goes away. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I think it's true. Uh, cancer cannot function in a strongly alkaline environment. And, uh, and actually, it was a friend of mine, Ted Baruti, who w wrote the book entitled Alkalize or Die. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so we need to understand what alkalinity is. <laughs> you know, acidity is basically too many protons, <laughs> the centripetal. Right. And, and alkalinity is where the, the protons have been balanced by enough electrons. Remember, electrons are a small electrical black hole. Right. So charge distribution efficiency, the presence of lots of electrons and not too many protons, uh, the metaphor for that could be illustrated perhaps as well by negative ion wind therapy. So every hospital knows that the side of the hospital with negative ions from the sea will have a dramatically higher healing rate. It's well documented in medical research. So we know for sure that negative ions are profoundly healing. Mm -hmm. and we also know that negative ions, literally the imploding black hole, the same as alkalinity, you know, propagating negativity, electrical negativity, uh, negative ion wind. You can even uh, eliminate our friend Joyce, uh, cell care therapy in Scotland, prove you could eliminate spinal meningitis, pump the, the infection out of the spine with a powerful enough negative ion wind therapy. Now, Joyce also commented that her therapy, negative ion wind, would stop working if the room was full of metal and synthetic fabric and electrosmog. Wow. Wow. Now we now know that all of that is also true of the plasma that comes out of Therify.net. Mm -hmm. the, the, the plasma field has the same physics as negative ion wind. Negative ion wind is fragile. So also is the plasma, the healing plasma, the charged cloud from Therify. It's implosive centripetal, just like negative ion wind, and fragile, just like negative ion wind. So why... Does metal and synthetic fabrics and electrosmog and dead air kill mm. negative ions and kill the healing plasma from Therify for the same reason that it prevents charge distribution efficiency? Uh, I think in alchemy we can say that uh, acidity is uh, compared to death and alkalinity is compared to uh, rebirth in alchemy. We can say that, right? Well, you know, it's true that if you have too much alkalinity, it's going to be poisonous also. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but, but the, the metaphor is that um, the, the blood uh, will get too acid for many of our behaviors, uh, acid food, etc. Whereas millet, for example, is alkaline or kale is alkalinizing. Mm -hmm. So what alkalinity in the blood means is that the... Uh, the white blood cells are able to stand by themselves, where in acid blood, the blood cells clump up. And when they clump like that, called roulette, the solubility goes down and bio, uh, bioavailability goes down. Yeah. So we actually did the live blood cell microscopy studies with Therify.net plasma and proved dramatically wow. that um, the, the blood cells would declump beautifully and therefore become more powerful and healthier in the presence of the therified plasma, just as has been widely shown for alkaline blood and alkaline dieting. Amazing. Okay. So one last question because uh, we're out of time. Uh, have you experimented then with um, uh, like curing parasites, for example, yeast in the case of cancer with electrical pulsations, frequencies? Uh, have we experimented with electrical pulsations? pulsations for killing parasites. For, for killing cancer? For, parasites, with parasites, yeah, regardless. Yeah, like yeast or certain viruses or bacteria. Well, if, if I understand your question, mm -hmm. um, one aspect of Therify is that we are modulating the plasma with a low-frequency harmonic cascade, which uh -huh. literally are the same frequencies as the Schumann resonance and the brainwaves for bliss, which is the equation for on my in my book. And that harmonic cascade, those low frequencies, are exactly the same low frequencies magnetically that Elizabeth Rauscher, one of the world's most famous physicists, proved in FDA trials reduce pain. Okay. So you have a caduceus-shaped cascade of low frequency harmonics, literally implosive, literally the Schumann harmonics actually is the same. Okay. And that is FDA proven 
to eliminate pain or reduce pain dramatically. It turns out that the coil, it's a bifiller huge Tesla coil, which okay. is fed 10, uh, actually a half a million volts, producing that particular low frequency pulse magnetic field already proven in FDA trials for pain reduction, okay. which is sitting right next to the person in the therapy. So we believe, we know what the perfect pulse harmonic cascade is for pain reduction. Actually, Elizabeth Rauscher discovered it. And later when I showed that the harmonic she used fit my equation, then she agreed that I had invented the concept of phase conjugate or implosive magnetics. So we think we know what the right pulse is. Beautiful, but uh, in regards to the Schumann's resonance, isn't it changing now from 7.8 and uh, going to the next Fibonacci like 13? The Schumann harmonic cascade, the primary harmonics, uh, 7.8 hertz in that cascade, it's a cascade of five to eight harmonics. And I was the first one to prove how to perfect the Schumann harmonics, okay. because we now know that they need to be uh, golden ratio exponents, integer exponents of Planck, yeah. which produces the perfect harmonic cascade. We actually know how to fix the Schumann <laughs> harmonics to make the Earth, Gaia, emerge from chaos. You know, Lovelock's book mm -hmm. proved Gaia, proved that Earth as a living body is self-organizing. But now we know why. So we know how to retune the Schumann harmonic. The Schumann harmonic cascade will increase in the number of frequencies present, but the base harmonic does not change and should not change. So Greg Braden was a little confused about that. But mm -hmm. the fact is that the same way your doctor measures if you have an immune system named harmonic inclusiveness in heart rate variability, the inclusive or fractal harmonics measure whether you have an immune system. The same physics allows you to measure the Schumann harmonics and determine if the Earth has an immune system. It's called mm -hmm. harmonic inclusiveness produces vitality. Yeah. You can read about it at goldenmean.info slash holarchy. It's literally a fractal heart is a healthy heart. So oh. the Schumann harmonics can increase in harmonic inclusiveness and you can actually measure in a tree whether the tree is actually happy by doing that physics. And that technology is at flameinmind.com for brainwaves and trees. Well, I don't know what to say, Dan. Uh, I don't want to take more of your time. Thank you so much for this. This is more like a trance, actually, for me. <laughs> so blessings, blessings. I have thank, so many thank questions. Thank you for being there. And, I have and, so many and thank questions. You for, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you for your dedication. And people can find the links at fractalfield.com, all the links. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, I hope we can do this from time to time. <laughs> thank you. I, I look forward to it any time. I really appreciate your sincerity and dedication. Really. Bless thank you, dear. I'm so honored. Thank you so much for your thank time. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.